Welcome to the Data Hall YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to see how can we use globals and local macros. So if you have been watching our channel, we, we discussed uh, how to use scalar and matrices. And then we, in our previous video, we, we discussed uh, how results can be extracted from the stored uh, scalars or matrices. But there were macros and we didn't discuss that. So this video, we are going to discuss macros. So macros are somewhat similar to scalar. And that is they store values. And uh, there are certain advantages and disadvantages of using one over the another and that we would discuss at the end of this, this video. Uh, so let's start with, uh, so macros are divided into global macros and local macros. And uh, the global macros are the one that uh, would work on other programs as well and not just for a specific do file where it is written. So starting with the global macro, we define global macro by writing the word, the command name global, then give any container or, uh, or label or name of the variable that would hold, hold uh, certain values. Uh, these values can be a numerical string or, or variable names. So for in this case, we are going to ask it to hold the list of our X variables or predictor variables. So in this case, let me just quickly load the data. In this case, we, we, are, uh, we are hypothesizing that price is dependent on mileage and weight. So mileage and weight becomes our, our independent or the predictor variables. So what we are saying is that would define a, a, a word X list and that would list R that would contain a list of our uh, independent variables or predictor variables. And the advantage is that when we are using regression or any command, say for example, summary or correlation, we do not need to uh, retype the whole list, right? Uh, we could simply write regress, then the dependent variable and the uh, the, the, the reference to the macro that stores uh, the list of our predictor variable. So while referencing, we would start with the, with the dollar sign and then the name of the macro. So we define it using X list and that, that is what we are going to use. If we execute this, uh, you would see that, um, although we didn't say that regress price on mileage and weight, but we, we said regress price on uh, dollar sign X list and uh, then what this Stata would do it, it would uh, see what is in that X list uh, and it would replace that X list by these two, uh, by whatever uh, the, the that X list container holds. So the advantage is one, if we, we are going to use multiple commands, so for example, we, we also wanted to do a summary of these variables so we wouldn't have to rewrite these variables uh, and they would uh, you know be uh, we can quickly use this uh, this reference to this global uh, global variable and if you wanted to change that global variable we would just uh, add or delete any uh, any variable that we wanted and uh, we, we, we wouldn't have to change all these commands specifically so sometimes if you have certain control variables and you realize that I need to drop certain control variables, you would just need to change the, the, the global macro. Similarly, we can divide uh, define the, the dependent variable. So again, we would use the global uh, command name. Then let's call it Y list, which holds the dependent variable. Isn't, it isn't the list anyways. Uh, and then the name or the string or whatever value we want to store we would regress y list on x list one more advantage is let's say we we are using certain um, uh, method of uh, you know standardization or say for example treatment of uh, uh, to to get rid with with the heteroscedasticity issue so for example we are going to use robust standard errors 
so what we can do is we can define a, a, a global macro that would hold that uh, you know the term robust and then at the end of the regression after the comma sign we can use uh, the reference and later on we wanted to uh, use instead of robust we wanted to use certain other method then you we, we would uh, quickly be able to change that and it would be changed in all our uh, our regressions okay and now what i usually do is that i have data files in different folders and i would define global uh, macro for different data fo folders right i would uh, give it a name and then um, it would hold the the path of that uh, that file and when i'm uh, i'm using that file i would simply use the the command use then the dollar sign uh, reference to that global macro because it holds the path and then the name of the file so in that way i do not have to always change the directory I would simply be able to define different folders and then reference them whenever I need them. Okay, let's come to local macros. Local macros are also for the same job, but the difference is that local macro would only be used in the current program. So when we are using this do file, this local macro would only be used in this specific file. Um, and it is good if because now we know that it will not be used uh, as a conflict with other programs but when we are using global uh, macros it uh, for example we are uh, referencing to certain other do files uh, this global macro would still be valid and uh, whatever new do file this specific do file would open till we have closed this data window uh, that global macro would would remain valid so how do we define local macro it is the same method we use the term local then the name of the um, uh, the local variable that we want to save it but this time we are using uh, equal to sign it, it isn't to say that whenever we, we are going to use local uh, macros we are going to use equality sign because for the second uh, example where I'm defining the variable as I did with the global macro, I'm using the term local, then the, then the, uh, then the uh, macro that it would uh, hold the values, and I'm not using the equality sign. So what is the reason for using equality sign over here? The reason is that uh, using equality sign uh, tells Stata that this macro, uh, uh, it, it would ca cause this macro to, to evaluate an expression. So here we have an expression and we want um, this this local one macro not to store 5 plus 5 uh, rather to evaluate this expression and whatever value is um, is is resulting from this expression we want this local one macro to store that value right not the 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 the, the expression itself but the resulting value from the expression so for numerical values using quality sign stores the result uh, of the expression uh, and not the characters or the strings uh, itself okay so uh, and that is what we can demonstrate from here uh, okay so you would see that when I execute this local uh, display um, first uh, of all how do we display or uh, reference to to local uh, to local variable or local macro sorry when we're using global macro we would use the dollar sign but in case of a local macro we would have to use uh, these uh, signs i am not sure what they are called but let me show it to you on the keyboard uh, so this first sign is the one that you would see over here with the escape sign uh, you know it is uh, along with the tilde sign if if i use this expression right the the button you would see that it gives us the same value whereas this is a simple apostrophe which i get from uh, this button right so now you know where these are and how do you reference to a local macro so local macro referencing to local macro is different than referencing to a global macro so once you have understood the re referencing uh, let's display it uh, this local macro we have already stored it but when we execute this command it do not display anything and the reason is the issue with 
the this this not the issue the shortfall or the the the, uh, the thing with local macro is that it have to be executed along um, with the definition of the macro so now it would be able to to display it so so it doesn't store this macro uh, this local macro stata doesn't store it in the memory as opposed to global macro global ma macro is stored in the memory till this program is open this specific stata window is open but in case of local macro it won't be stored in the memory so we would have to simultaneously execute them if we are using the do file but if we were uh, directly executing them from the command window then uh, let's say we wrote the local macro and defined the expression and now we are going to display it so we could have simply wrote that and it would be able to execute it doesn't need necessary that these two would be executed from the command line simultaneously uh, because uh, in command line uh, when we press enter it uh, directly you know executes that command but in the do file you you might get confused so this is why i'm sharing it with you let's define the variables as we did with the global macro uh, right and again we would have to simultaneously execute them uh, so the same procedure as we did with the global macro and the same result is that we would get uh, so uh, let's say we wanted to generate a new variable right and uh, uh, so so what what I have done is that for each variable that is stored in this local list I want to generate a new variable and call it new underscore and the name of the variable that is stored over here um, and its value would be equal to the variable itself so what it would do is it it would take first start with the mpg variable it would generate a new variable called new underscore mpg and it would hold the values in the mpg variable and then it would uh, move on to the second variable so again we would have to execute them along with the local command that defines it because we are using it from the do file so now if i show it to you from here we have two new variables uh, new underscore mpg and new underscore weight so this uh, this local macro comes quite in handy when we are using uh, uh, loops uh, but one thing uh, one thing that uh, should we use scalar or macros because they do the same thing um, but what should we do should we use scalars or should we use macros uh now scalars are simpler they are faster uh scalar is drop and but but the thing with scalar is that it would be dropped if we are using the clear all uh command right so let's come here i have what i have done is i have defined a local a macro a global macro and a scalar so a is local macro b is global macro and c is a scalar they all have values and when I execute this command, we should see, uh, although I have cleared uh, the data, so the data would be removed. But when I execute, we see all the, the three values, one, two, and three. So all the, uh, even after the clear, the local, global, and the scalar would remain in the memory. But what if uh, I use clear all uh, command? now you would see that i do get one and two which is local and global macro but c is not found which was uh, the scalar right c was the scalar so <clears throat> the reason is that when we use the clear or command it would remove the scalar from the memory but the local and global uh, would remain there and uh, lastly uh, when we are using you know uh, global macros or local macros to reference them we are using certain commas or uh, you know dollar signs so if, if i am looking at this program i can quickly see that uh, this is a local macro this is a global macro and i do not know what c is right uh, so this is a visual advantage of using a local and global macro because we can quickly know uh, what we are getting into uh, lastly uh, with with the with the numerical expression we did use equality sign but if we wanted to had a string expression then we would not uh, use the equality sign rather we would uh, use the inverted commas uh, 
sorry let's use this some string expression uh, okay so for that we would also have to use inverted commas over here and if I even did uh, 5 plus 5 so that would also be uh, given as a string rather than um, uh, you know executing the expression right uh, thanks for watching this video stay tuned to this channel and uh, i hope uh, you'd learn more